Hello everyone, happy Friday. Um, again, this is just a last minute video that I decided to do while I'm sitting out here on my porch working. Um, I got an email this morning from someone, um, I think they're in the group, they might just be on my subscriber list, but it was an email in response to yesterday's email all about the three, way, the three things you need to focus on to uh, start to improve your sex life. Um, and she asked, she said, this is all great, for the woman who doesn't have a sex drive, but what about the woman who has an incredible sex drive and her husband is the one that doesn't? So um, I sent her a quick response, but I also wanted to just kind of come on here and, and talk to you guys about it and tell you what I told her. So basically, it's actually the same things, right? The same things we need to focus on. There's a lot of nuance in this area that I will be honest about. I am still learning how to coach my clients through. I am still learning how to help you uh, kind of meet that, that need within yourself if you are the woman who has the incredible sex drive and your partner does not. But I will say this, we are all humans who are all living the human experience. And whether it's yourself that has the low sex drive or your husband who has the low sex drive, um, we can apply the same tools. We can apply the same three skills. So I wanna go over those again with you today, but from the perspective of if you're the one with the incredible sex drive and your partner is not. So um, let me get, get back to my notes really quick. So number one, um, what, what was number one yesterday? It was that you had to feel safe emotionally, right? So let's flip this and ask yourself, does your partner feel safe emotionally? Does he feel guilt around sex? Does he feel pressure? and struggle with not being man enough in the same way I, I you know kind of you know talk to you about being woman enough and that you are woman enough you are good enough you are a good enough wife even if you are going through a low sex drive that doesn't mean that you are not good enough that you're not lovable enough right does your partner feel this does he feel safe emotionally to even express his emotions with you um or does he feel like maybe uh he's he's criticized in this whether it's criticism from you criticism from society for not being a good enough man in this area right or criticism from himself um is he criticizing himself intensely on this area my guess is most men who are struggling in this area are very critical against themselves even if they're not showing it even if their um even if their way is to show that is by avoiding or being uh resentful or um or uh just kind of angry about it right <laughs> we all show these kind of like these these things in a different way depending on our personalities but my question for you would just be to ask yourself like does he feel safe does he feel and and your part in that is holding space for him to express his feelings right to express like what he feels uh in that moment and to totally do the work in yourself to remind yourself even though my husband is going through a low sex drive or maybe he's never had a sex drive does that mean he is not a human worthy of total complete love and compassion right and then ask yourself how you want to show up for him in that how do you want to express love to him in that um you know i i don't have this problem of personally I have a lot of the problems that you guys have in marriages, but I don't have this problem personally. I was always the one who really struggled with uh, a, a low libido. Um, and so I had to do the work in myself to kind of uncover the reasons why. Um, and my husband was always the one with a high libido, right? So I can, I can totally understand actually where the person is coming from with the low libido versus the one with the high libido. However, 
there were a couple years where my husband's libido did drop and it was totally due to some like life changes, circumstance changes, and through some depression that he was feeling at that moment. So my, my question for you also would be, you know, ask yourself, like, you know, is your partner going through any uh, very heavy emotion changes in life, uh, whether that's career change or um, even career fatigue, right? Or, um, or even like depression, right? Um, is he going through some things like that that maybe you kind of need to dig in deeper on and see if maybe he does need to go to a doctor to kind of figure out what's going on deeper with his uh with his body and with his mind right um and how can you how can you welcome that conversation with complete acceptance of exactly who he is right now right that's what helps to create that safe space emotionally when you can approach these these conversations with total love and understanding and respect from of where he's at right now instead of criticism right um society likes to tell us a whole lot of things about sex right like if we're going through a low drive it, society likes to tell us there's something wrong with us right when maybe there's nothing wrong with us innately there just might be something that we can uncover to help us live more fully into the lives that we want to live. So, you know, those, those little nuances in conversations that, that, sh that show that you totally love and accept your partner exactly as they are, and you want to help them live their fullest life is way different than a conversation that's led with criticism and blame. Right. So, um, you know, that that number one issue of feeling safe emotionally goes for them too. Okay, second one was pleasure for you. Okay, let's talk about this in two, way, two ways. If your partner is not satisfying you sexually, how do you, how can you tap into that, um, that pleasure for yourself, right? You might want to buy some sex toys. You might want to, uh, you might want to play around with different things like that for a while. Um, but also, also, I encourage you, if, if you do that, welcome your partner into that, right? Let them know in a fun and flirty way, hey, this is a need for me. I'm going to take my own, uh, I, I'm, I'm going to take charge of my own sexuality. Here's how, and I welcome you to join me, right? see what they say, see how that, see how that lands. Um, so many times we want to hide that for ourselves. If, if self-pleasure is a thing that you're going to go after, you want so many times, like we want to hide it, but I encourage you to just share it openly, right? Share it. Um, yes, it can be a private thing for you and it can be a really unique bonding experience for you to say, Hey, I got these toys. Let's see. Let's play with them, right? Let's play with them together. Let's let's start to uh, explore some new sexual things for ourselves, right? Um, and the other thing is, my question for you know some some of the things that you could really welcome in your conversations is, does your partner understand the benefits of sexual pleasure for their self? For, for his overall health, for, um, you know, does he understand the, the value as a, as a human that gets to experience pleasure? Um, and if not, I would, ask, I would ask this in other areas of his life too, right? Does he welcome fun in his life? Does he welcome, um, does he welcome just fun for the sake of fun or is he just working all day coming home totally exhausting popping open a beer or sitting down with a snack and just like so exhausted from the day's work that he forgot how to have fun if so you might want to start with just having fun in other areas as well right like having um bringing in some more excitement in your life in other areas can sometimes sometimes increase the the libido again, right? Um, what else? Um, 
Okay, number three was to tune into your partner. And we've touched on this a lot in, in, the, in the last two points, but, but do you know what your partner is thinking? Can you get curious about what they're thinking? Do they want to increase their sex drive as well? Or are they totally fine without it? Do you even know? Um, do they feel safe even telling you? Or do they feel like if they, if they express their true thoughts on it, are they afraid they're gonna get a tongue lashing, right? Or, um, or kind of feel bad and, and feel like they're being criticized, right? Just kind of be aware of those things, right? Awareness in your response, awareness in how you're communicating, awareness in how you view him as a lovable, worthy human being, no matter what he's going through. Um, bringing awareness to this is such a powerful thing, right? You don't even have to change much, but just bringing awareness to how you communicate and how you uh, welcome these kind of conversations is, is the, the top priority for you as a person who's trying to understand how to improve your, your, your marriage in this area. Um, I would also say like part of tuning into your partner would be to simply welcome him into the conversation and say, just like really get very clear. Don't beat around the bush. Don't give simple, subtle hints. Um, get very, very clear and very honest on how you can um, explain yourself and, and be super vulnerable. Um, even going to him and saying, hey, this is a big deal to me. I want our sex life to improve. I want us to keep getting better and better at it. I'm not looking for perfection. I just want us to have fun again in this area, right? I want us to have, uh, I want us to, to grow in this area again. I want us to, to keep exploring each other's bodies. And, and, and I believe, you, you know, welcome this conversation with a total belief that it is going to improve, right? When you come to your, your partner and say, um, and, and speak it in a way that feels desperate and exhausting, they're going to feel desperate and exhausted. But if you go and you welcome this conversation with total love, compassion, hope, humor, fun, right? Bringing in those things are going to help create that safety to start communicating about it. Um, so that's what I've got for you today. Um, I encourage you to start there. Start with those three things. How can you really create emotional safety? for them to be totally vulnerable? Um, how can you drop criticism in this area? How can you um, help them to welcome in pleasure in other areas of life so that they can remind themselves that part of hum being a human is really fun pleasure, right? Really fun activities. And then they can start to kind of open their brains to, oh yeah, sex is a really fun activity too. And it's a really fun activity that I can connect with my partner. And then tune in, be honest, get curious about their thoughts, be super honest with your thoughts, and lead those conversations from hope and love and trust that it's going to get better. All right, you guys reach out to me and uh, book a free con consultation with me if you want to go over the specifics of your relationship, of how you can start to uh, grow immensely not just in this area, but like in, in all areas that involve communication and total love and compassion and uh, going after your goals together as a couple. Um, I'll put a link in the comments to sign up for a free consultation with me. You should take advantage of that. Take advantage of that free consultation, you guys. Um, okay, I will talk to you guys later. Have a great weekend. Bye.